Hello, welcome to my short pres presentation about using peer review to develop clinical reasoning. During this short presentation, I would like to discuss with you why it's important that we have to uh, engage uh, our students actively uh, in clinical reasoning. And I uh, would like to show you an example how we use this during our uh, educational program. My name is Selma May and I'm one of the lecturers of the University of Applied Science in Utrecht. When you look at this, you can see um, an idea about what we should um, develop to get an expert in physical therapy. And um, when you ask patients and you ask colleagues about uh, characteristics of things we think that are important in our developing to being a good of perfect expert care uh, um, physical therapist, uh, people answer that it's about knowledge, clinical reasoning and engaging philosophy of our uh, um, profession uh, in, uh, in the way we work with patients. And when we look at our students, um, and that's what you can see uh, at the left side above, we sometimes see that there are, uh, those three elements are not um, integrated in their uh, interaction with patients, but they are more or less um, uh, learning things, uh, they can discuss uh, their ideas about the profession and they can um, play with clinical reasoning but it's still a part. When they are at the end of the program we see that those three things get nearer to each other uh, and when they come back during for example the master program we see that it's it's getting more and more integrated and for some students we can see that uh, it's a more a way of life to integrate those three things. Um, but because our students have to practice um, things, I think clinical reasoning and engaging students in clinical reasoning and discuss what they are thinking about is one of the most important things to activate and to support this process of getting an integrated uh, um, therapist um, of the and therapist that can integrate those three things uh, during the encounter with the patient. And we are talking about the lifelong learning. And what is learning? Learning is a developing of a systematic study. Um, it's a process uh, itself. And it's um, uh, in during the process we have the modification of behavior and the modification of behavior uh, uh, we can do about the way we encounter with our students, we, and the way we train them and the experience they are having in the, uh, during the traineeships. Uh, so when we talk about learning, it's about exp explicit learning. Uh, that's what's uh, written down. That's the program of ours uh, is. But I think learning, and that's a very powerful thing, it's about implicit learning as well. Uh, implicit learning is about uh, more the way we uh, uh, teach things, the way we um, discuss things and the, uh, how um, um, we use their experience and their thoughts to, um, uh, to talk with them. Uh, and by doing that, I think we can create reflective practitioners and being uh, able to integrate philosophy, knowledge and clinical reasoning, reflection, I think, is a very powerful uh, method to do that. And um, a an, uh, professor uh, from the United States, she, she's doing a lot of research about reflection uh, during our encounters with students. And uh, she once wrote that it's not the experience itself that makes us change our profession, but the reflection on the experience that makes us change. And when we use this during our education, then we probably have to reflect on two different things, and that's the method reflection and the self-reflection. And method reflection is about uh, more why I'm doing things, why I think clinically about things, and the self-reflection is more about yourself as a person uh, during your professional development. Um, and in our program, we use uh, peer review to support the method reflection, um, so that they are more 
able to um, discuss their choice they make during clinical reasoning. Um, and now I would like to introduce you peer reviewing um, so that you can think about how can we use this one in our own uh, uh, educational program. Um, in its short, what is peer review? Uh, it's, um, it's a session with a group of students. Most of the time we see about 20 students together and then we split off in uh, four groups. One of the students, and we use this method mainly during the internships, uh, present uh, a case. Uh, they have experience um, during the internship. Uh, one of the students is a moderator, so she should check that the process is going well and it's safe. Uh, and the other students are uh, the participants of the group who discuss uh, the case together with, uh, uh, with these other. Uh, during um, the peer review, we follow a structured way to get uh, to a deeper uh, part of the case, not just, okay, um, it's more, more than evaluation, it's really to support reflection on the case uh, and to help the, that the case presenter at the end uh, can think differently about his case or have new uh, strategy to change the behavior, his own or the patient's behavior in the case. Here you can see um, the schedule of a session. So you, um, the case presenter should prepare the case. Um, uh, sometimes it's um, it's already uh, shared with, the, with with each other, but your case you should really prepare your case well. And then at the start of the session, the case presenter should um, present. Uh, of make a short introduction of his case and most of important about his learning questions of his uh, dilemma during uh, in the case. So uh, it's not only just discuss a case but there should be a real important question for the case presenter. Um, sometimes they use a video or pictures uh, to um, uh, support the question um, and the um, the presenter should show what he's thinking about and where his question is coming from. The group listens and at, then there's uh, um, about 10 minutes that they can ask questions about the, uh, the case, not uh, with a judgment or with a, um, an, an, um, an, a possible result, but uh, to, to understand the, the case in a deeper uh, way than before. Um, when the, the case and the question is clear to everybody, then the group can discuss uh, their thoughts, their um, ideas, um, and they normally the case presenter is not part participating in this uh, discussion but listening. Um, sometimes it, a case asks to look uh, at puppets together uh, or just to look uh, um, uh, in guidelines so the, the discussion is about the case uh, from, the different, from the different perspectives of uh, treatment and uh, this, um, diagnostics. They share at the end their consideration um, and the students formulate an advice for the ca case uh, uh, presenter. And then they discuss the, um, together with the case presenters the feedback, the, the advice they are there's given. And at the end of the session, the case presenter should uh, summarize what's um, what's helped him and uh, how is if that his question is answered or not of uh, if there are new thoughts he should uh, he or she should um, think about in the future our experience is that the students um, learn uh, that there is not only one solution at one time but that they are they are learning to think about different perspectives 
um, and making his, their own choices uh, during this uh, encounter with, with this other. So it's learning together um, um, in an explicit way because this is very structured, but the way they, uh, they discuss things it's in an implicit way as well. Thank you for your attention and I will hope you will uh, be able to uh, uh, discuss with your students because clinical reasoning, uh, doing together is a very active and nice process with your students.